Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Uh, welcome to the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations uh, webinar on our new grant funding opportunity announcement under our Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas program. We're thrilled that you're here and love to see the uh, high participation. So thank you so much. I'm Katrina Pielli, the Director of the Engagement Office for OSED, and I'll be kicking us off today. Uh, first, before we dive in, a couple of housekeeping items. Note that this webinar is being recorded. It will be posted on the U.S. Department of Energy OSED website. All participants are in listen-only mode, and you have the ability to turn on live captions by clicking on the show captions in your control panel. Finally, a copy of today's presentation will be posted on the OSED webpage very soon, and a link will be posted on the OSED Exchange under this Funding Opportunity Announcement, or FOA, information. The recording of today's session will also be available on the webinar's webpage in about two weeks. Next slide, please. Now, just some quick language. Um, just please note that the purpose of this webinar is to provide an overview of our ERA grant FOA. We are only sharing publicly available information today, but we do hope that this is helpful to illuminate some of the nuances of this exciting announcement. Note that watching this recording or attending the webinar today is fully voluntary and will not impact an applicant selection. There are no particular advantages or disadvantages to the application evaluation process with respect to participating in today's webinar. Also note that this webinar is not a rule or regulation and that material will not be collected or accepted through this webinar. Note, as I mentioned earlier, we're not taking questions or feedback today but we really encourage you to submit any questions that you might have about this specific grant FOA to the email you see at the bottom of this page, e-r-a-g-r-a-n-t at hq.doe.gov. Next slide, please. And now without further ado, I am pleased to introduce our guest speaker to kick us off today, the Director of the Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations, David Crane, who will offer opening remarks. So David, over to you. Thank you, Katrina, and uh, thank everyone for joining this afternoon and happy Memorial Day uh, to get started. As, as Katrina said, we're very excited to present at this webinar, our grant funding FOA which while we have several FOAs, this is our first grant funding. So we appreciate you taking the, the time to listen uh, to our attempts to detail what we're planning here. Uh, obviously the, the focus of this uh, grant FOA is on rural and remote communities uh, around the United States. And this is a, a very important area for us because we all know that access to safe, affordable, reliable energy is the key to economic prosperity. And that's what we're here to do is support economic prosperity in rural and remote areas, as well as suburban and urban areas. We're also trying to pro promote fairness of energy access to all Americans. And uh, we want rural and remote uh, areas to benefit from the clean energy transition that's underway, enabling them to uh, access their own solar, wind, and other natural energy resources. Um, in the course of this webinar, you're going to hear about two features, which are, are, I think are very important, very unusual. First of all, most of what we do at OSED is done on a 50-50 cost-sharing basis, where the private sector provides 50% of the money and the Department of Energy provides the other 50%. In, in consideration of where uh, we're talking about these projects going, we're waiving that 50% cost sharing uh, so, that, so that the private sector is not required uh, to, to uh, contribute half of the financing of these projects. And second, we're recognizing that in the past, there's been a question of accessibility for rural and remote communities in terms of the difficulty, the complexity of dealing with the federal government. Uh, hopefully, you'll see and you'll hear in the course of this webinar how we've made the application process dramatically more simple. And so we hope uh, we hope that this you'll find this very appealing and, like I said, very accessible. We know that rural and remote communities it's it's one category across the United States. The the vastness of our country that. In rural and remote areas, energy consumption is, is, is very closely related to weather conditions, and those weather conditions vary. 
We hope to be able to support projects across the country in a variety of weather conditions. And again, you know, our role here is to enable projects to occur that might not otherwise have occurred, accelerate projects that may have been in long-term planning to have them uh, occur more, uh, more quickly, and overall to, em to empower rural and remote communities as they get after uh, you know, solving their energy uh, issues as, as we get into the 21st century. On a final note, um, this FOA, uh, this grant FOA for us at the Office of Clean Energy Demonstration actually represents tremendous ambition, but it may not be noticeable to you because the, the ambition is in the simplicity of this uh, solicitation. Uh, it's the first time we've done it this way. Uh, it's just the first step. We may not get it right every uh, point of the way, but we ask that you work with us you know, with the common objective that we have with you to make these projects happen, to make them accessible to every rural and remote community in the United States uh, so that we can all share in a better future. And uh, with that, Katrina, back to you. Great, thank you so much, David. We are thrilled that you were able to be here with us today and able to kick us off. Um, very much appreciate your time and your enthusiasm for this specific project. So now shifting gears a little bit, um, recognizing that some of you might be familiar with OSED, but some of you might not. And so we wanted to anchor the specific ERA program in our overall portfolio and our overall office. So for folks that aren't familiar, OSED was established a little over a year ago by the bipartisan infrastructure law to scale the clean energy technologies that we need to tackle our nation's most pressing climate challenges and achieve net zero by 2050. We received more than 25 billion for demonstration projects from both that infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act. And from the infrastructure law funding, 1 billion was allocated to create and set up the ERA program shown on the right of the slide. Next slide, please. So our mission at OSED is to deliver these clean energy demonstration projects uh, in partnership with private sector, as David alluded to, looking to really accelerate their deployment, their market adoption, and the equitable transition to a decarbonized energy system. And so this means that we are investing in projects that will support quality job creation, advance environmental and energy justice, facilitate that inclusive energy transition across the country in all communities, and ensure that benefits flow to those disadvantaged communities. Next slide, please. So I'd like now to introduce my colleague, Regina Gaylor. Regina is the Energy Improvements in Rural of Remote Areas, or ERA, Program Manager. She will give more background on the ERA program and the specific grant funding opportunity that we're here today to talk about. So Regina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Katrina. Thank you, David, and thank you to our team behind making this possible today. And I would just add my thanks for all of you who've joined us. We're really honored to be with you here. So I'm Regina Gaylor. I'm the program manager for this energy improvements and rural or remote areas program that is part of that OSID office that Katrina spoke of. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act commonly called the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, authorizes Department of Energy to invest this $1 billion in our program, Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas. Department of Energy's ERA program is managed by this Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations, as Katrina highlighted. <clears throat> OSID, this Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations, will provide financial investment, technical assistance, and other resources that help advance clean energy demonstrations and energy solutions that we believe benefit rural and remote communities. The ERA program aims to fund the clean energy projects with three specific goals I'll outline for you here. The first is deliver measurable benefits to energy customers in rural or remote areas by funding replicable energy projects that lower costs, improve energy access and resilience, and or reduce environmental harm. Second goal, 
support new rural or remote energy system models using climate resilient technologies, business structures that promote economic resilience, new financing mechanisms, and or new community engagement practices. And third, build clean energy knowledge, capacity, and self-reliance in rural America. We're excited to share this program grant funding opportunity for community-based projects between $500,000 and $5 million in value. This funding requires no cost share from recipients and projects funded will improve the cost, reliability, environmental impact, and climate resilience of energy systems in rural America with 10,000 or fewer inhabitants. And that's key. Next slide, please. So overall, the grant funding opportunity announcement objectives come from the bipartisan infrastructure law language which states that clean energy projects funded under this solicitation, this funding opportunity announcement, must satisfy at least one of the, the objectives listed here, A through F, we call them for short, in that bilateral infrastructure law section 40103C3. These resilient clean energy objectives are improving overall cost effectiveness of energy generation, transmission or distribution systems, siting or upgrading transmission and distribution lines, reducing greenhouse gas emissions from energy generation in rural or remote areas, providing or modernizing electric generation facilities, developing microgrids, and increasing energy efficiency. Next slide, please. A little bit on award information. <clears throat> the grant funding opportunity announcement has one topic area, you say, which solicits proposals to implement community-driven clean energy projects of at least $500,000 and at most $500 million in value using one or more clean energy technologies that improve reliability and or resilience of energy systems, reduce energy poverty, or improve environmental performance of energy generation in a rural or remote community. The estimated number of awards will range from 10 to 100 with a maximum project period of five years or as proposed. Next slide, please. Let me tell you a little bit about our Office of Clean Energy Demonstrations project management structure, so referencing implementation phase. OSID projects follow a structured phased management approach that the application should manage in accordance with these phases. The approach includes the following four phases. Phase one is detailed project planning. Phase two will entail project development, permitting, and financing. Phase three will include installation, integration, or construction. And phase four would involve ramp up and sustained operations. Next slide, please. So the eligibility requirements for this specific FOA uh, are tied directly back to the infrastructure law, which defines rural or remote areas as a city, town, or unincorporated area that has a population of not more than 10,000 inhabitants. And so we are bound to that eligibility requirement. Uh, specifically, we are looking at utilizing the Census Bureau figures from 2020 um, to help benefit the proposal. And each applicant does need to either be a city, town, or unincorporated municipality, or be the census designated place or a similar discrete and identifiable community that is not located within an incorporated municipality. Please do note that applications that do not satisfy this requirement will be considered ineligible and removed from further evaluation. So we are um, making sure that you know there is a guidance document for this FOA 
available on OSET Exchange under the FOA's posting for information on how to use the U.S. Census Bureau data to determine a community's population if you would like to use that. Next slide, please. So continuing the eligibility requirements, uh, we do want to note that the applicant and any subrecipients must be domestic U.S. entities. So the following types of entities are eligible to participate, again, either as a prime or a subrecipient. Um, you can see them listed here, again, hearkening back to the infrastructure law. So institutes of higher education, not-for-profits, for-profits. Um, federally recognized Indian nations, state and local government entities, uh, incorporated and unincorporated consortia. We do want to highlight that federal agencies and other federal agencies are not eligible to participate under any capacity. Um, also just flagging that domestic incorporated consortia are eligible as both a prime or a subrecipient. So this is a little in the weeds, but you are really encouraged to look at the detailed language on eligibility in section three of the funding opportunity announcement. Um, next slide. And whenever Regina rejoins us, um, I'm happy to go ahead and pass this back to her. So here we wanted just to highlight some examples of projects that could be constructed under this FOA. We do want to really make sure you know that we are not um, really telling you these are the projects that we want to see. They are for illustrative purposes only, and you're not limited at all to these examples and are encouraged to propose the projects that best address the energy priorities of your community. So some examples that we've identified include the installation of standalone microgrids, including for uses around critical facilities and grid resilience and reliability the siting of transmission and distribution lines, improving of substations, installing geothermal or ground loop heat pumps, looking at deploying small hydropower, innovations around solar power siting, including over canals or agriculture land, such as agrivoltaics, also looking at interesting or innovative ownership structures, use of biogas from agriculture waste, either as biogas from the actual um, uh, agriculture waste for anaerobic digestion or to fuel other on-site equipment that would generate power or to inject in a pipeline. And so with that, I'd like to now introduce my colleague, Michael Kuka. Michael is a program engineer with the Energy Improvements in Rural or Remote Areas program. And he's going to cover some of the commonly asked questions and next steps. So with that, Michael, over to you. Thank you, Katrina. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be with you all today. Thank you for joining us. Um, so a lot of the questions that we get um, at the ERA program, I'm going to share with you. Um, as a reminder, when you go to the website on Exchange and look under FOA 3045, and we'll have that link at the, at the closing slide, that we do have a Q&A log. And at any time, feel free to uh, open that site, um, look at the Q&A log. It will be updated periodically and have new questions from all potential applicants. And any question that you ask when you send it to our ERA grant at hq.doe.gov uh, address, which will also be on the closing slide, um, will be logged into that Q&A log for your reference. So often a, a big question we get is, is how do how do I um, determine if the population of not more than 10,000 is, is in my city? Um, so what we have here is a screenshot. As uh, Katrina also said on slide 13, this is uh, discussed in the uh, FOA resource document. And it, it simply shows you how to go to uh, data.census.gov. And when you do, do that, uh, there'll be a, the entry bar and you simply enter your city and state. And if you are searching for a county, you can do that as well. And if you're searching for a census designated place, you can do that as well. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, send an email to us, um, but do uh, take a look at the, the reference documents and uh, try and see if you can and find it in there. If you have any questions, just let us know. Next slide. Another question that we receive often is, uh, what is the application submission process? Um, well, quite at the beginning, uh, we have the pre-application, 
And that pre-application is described in 4.4.1 of the FOA. And the pre-applications will be reviewed following the criteria described in 5.0.1. So essentially in section four, you can see what the pre-application content is and what you need to submit. And then in section five, you can see how it will be reviewed. And based on the results of these reviews, uh, DOE will invite selected applicants to submit a full application. Applicants not, in, not invited to submit full applications will not be further considered for funding opportunities under this FOA. Next slide, please. Often uh, another question we receive is, is how exactly will the pre-applications be reviewed and evaluated? And uh, you can reference the FOA as well, of course, in 5.0.1, which we just mentioned. Uh, but basically the pre-applications uh, will be evalu evaluated against the review criteria shown below. The criterion one is project benefits and criterion two would be the technical approach. And we did provide a template on the OSTED exchange uh, that allows you to use that template for pre-application, but you are certainly uh, allowed to just use the reference information in 5.0.1 and submit as a PDF on your own. Uh, template is not mandatory, but it's encouraged to ensure you have the appropriate information. If you have any questions on using the template or how to uh, decipher any, anything, or if you have questions on what the content is, feel free to email us at the ERA grant email that we'll share shortly. Next slide, please. Uh, similarly, is uh, how will the full application be reviewed? And you see this slide uh, that is based on four criteria. They'll include the community benefits plan, the work plan, the technical merit, and the financial viability. Next slide, please. Full applications must also include a community benefits plan and describe how the project will incorporate the following four objectives, meaningful community and labor engagement, invest in the American workforce, advance diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, and contribute to the president's goal that 40% of the overall benefits flow to disadvantaged communities. This is known as the Justice 40 initiative. If you'd like to have more details on uh, specific components uh, with each criterion, reference, reference the FOA and uh, all the information is there exactly on what content is required for the pre-application, what content is required for the full application, and how each of those applications will be reviewed. Next slide, please. And finally, I'd like to offer you two different types of technical assistance that we would like to share as part of our program. First, uh, the NREL technical assistance uh, is available um, for eight hours of technical assistance um, while you're sorting through your application. The example topics may include describing technology and systems to be developed, construction activities and infrastructure deployment development, a description of preliminary deployment plans and timelines, detailing the qualifications, experience and capabilities, and uh, preparing the community benefits plan. We have a link uh, to access that technical assistance uh, application on OSET Exchange, which will be on the final slide here today. And uh, we're happy to announce the Environmental Justice Thriving Communities Technical Assistance Centers, um, commonly referred to as the Tic Tacs. Uh, this is a partnership between EPA and the DOE and 17 technical assistance centers will receive at least $10 million to remove barriers and improvement, improve accessibility for communities with environmental justice concerns. You can find more information on the EJ Tic Tacs on our website, uh, which will be here on the final page. Next slide, please. Another question that we receive is around the application and awards process. We have a lot of questions that come for eligibility and when will I be selected, when will I hear. Uh, ultimately, as it's a competitive process, we'll notify applicants and it's the of, of our determination via notification letter by email and to the technical and administrative points of contact designated by the applicant no set exchange. The notification letter, letter will inform the applicant whether or not its application was selected for award negotiations. Applications do not receive an award until negotiations are complete and the grants and agreements officer execute the funding agreement. 
Applicants must designate a primary and a backup point of contact in OSTED Exchange with whom DOE will communicate to conduct award negotiations. Next slide. And we'd like to just go ahead and highlight our key deadlines. Uh, they're all coming up uh, this summer and into the fall. Uh, we have the July 13th, that will be the submission deadline for pre-applications. We have October 12th, which will be the deadline for full applications. And we're looking just after the holidays that we hope to make notifications and uh, begin into award negotiations. And that will last for the next few months after we make the announcements for selections. Next slide. Finally, there's an important uh, note that we are prohibited, in communication, prohibited from communication in writing or otherwise with applicants regarding the FOA, except through the established question and answer process described below. So I'd like to highlight again, I, I see our colleague Juan put both the FOA link address and the email there in the chat, which you have accessible to you. Uh, please do open that FOA link and uh, have a look at our documents. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be able to have the uh, FOA published in Spanish as well. And if you have any questions about how to apply or uh, descriptions of the FOA, feel free to ask us at eragrant at hq.doe.gov. You must submit questions no later than three business days prior to the application due date and time. And please note that feedback on individual concepts will not be provided through Q&A. Um, we won't uh, give you a determination on your eligibility or if we um, encourage you to put in a pre-application. Um, we won't give any feedback on those items uh, until we close and then provide official feedback to all applicants. All questions and answers related to this so will be posted on OSET Exchange. Uh, you must first select the specific FOA number to view the questions and answers specific to this FOA. OSED will attempt to respond to a question within three business days unless a similar question and answer has already been posted on the website. And what that means is if you don't see your question posted uh, within three to five business days after you've asked it, um, look through the Q&A log and see if that question has already been asked prior by another potential applicant. Questions related to the registration process and use of OSET Exchange, they should be submitted to the web address here on the bottom left of the slide. It's OSED-exchange support at hq.doe.gov. And please include the FOA name and the number in the subject line if you have a question for OSED Exchange. Please also refer to the FOA for the definition of used terms and additional information related to the requirements of any additional post application submission information. Thank you very much for your time and I'll pass it back to Katrina to close this out. Great, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, really, thank you to all of our speakers. On behalf of the entire OSED and ERA team, we thank you all for attending and listening to this webinar. As a final reminder, the FOA does remain the controlling document. So if any information was presented differently in this webinar from the FOA, the FOA is the guiding document and applicants should refer to the FOA. As we mentioned at the top, the recording of this webinar will be posted on the OSED website within the next couple of weeks. And we encourage you all to apply. We're so excited about this opportunity. So thank you all for attending and we wish you a good rest of your day. Thank you.